the regular agenda, we're going to be removing 4E and 14. And we're going to be adding on between 19 and 20 that sheet that's in front of us, the ARPA, American Rescue Plan Act. We'll have that discussion at that time. All right. I don't believe there's anything else change-wise, at least I haven't been told of any, so. Motion to approve the agenda with changes. Okay. Second. Change, change, Jeff, there's a second. All right, all in favor say aye. Aye. All right, we're going to approve. Okay, on the consent agenda, again, we're doing everything but E on this one. Jim, is there anything else on here that we need to? No, just a little question? update on the change order number one for South Bend Farms, third is the addition of a stormwater um, driveway to the stormwater lift station. When it was originally designed and constructed, we were going to use the uh, street as our access, and that pump is a little bigger than what we anticipated. To get down to it, we needed to build a driveway to back the truck a little closer. We need a crane to get over to it. <coughs> okay. Just a concrete, concrete driveway off of 80. No, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, all right, that motion carries. Uh, anybody notice anything different in the council meeting minutes that we had? Otherwise, I'm going to look for a motion to approve. No, I can approve, uh, make a motion to approve the minutes from the last council member or council. Okay. Meeting. And I can second that. All right, now we know. make some motion. Sir, does a second. All right, all in favor say aye. 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 Okay, motion carries on uh, number six, two on the special meeting minutes. So all look good? Any yeah, changes? motion to approve the special meeting minutes. Second. Okay, Chelsea does motion, Jeff does a second. All right, all in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. All right, open it up for public comment. Anybody got anything you want to talk about tonight? Want it? Okay, grab the microphone, please. I'm Lynette Weber. I live at 10,005 County Road 17 South. As a resident, I want to bring it to uh, city staff and city council's attention. Um, when we do business, I'd appreciate if we could keep business local. I happened to notice on the special assessment open house meeting, um, the mailing was mailed out of Fargo. We struggled to keep our Horace post office open a couple of years ago. Mr. Corsman and I believe Corey both wrote letters fighting to keep that office open full time. I asked the city, use our local Horace post office when doing mailings. The city has a permit. No reason why that the city office, uh, city Horace post office cannot be used. So just to bring it to your attention, it's my request, keep things local. We deserve to give our business as much business as we can. In the end, with our businesses, we also get sales tax revenue. Okay. Thank you. I have one more item that I'd like to bring up, and I'm going to give you a short version of it because I'm still a little fired up about it and I'm trying to control my anger. Um, last Tuesday night, my husband noticed that there was a truck along County 17. He went out there later to find that they'd drilled a hole looking for the natural gas. And he looked where it was placed and raised concern. He followed because the young man went to the west to Miss Belgard's yard, two houses to the west of us, and noticed the man was drilling, drilling holes at her property. He came back in the house and he tells me, um, honey, you know what's going on with that situation? He knows I do pay a little more attention to the city council minutes and things going on. And I said that I had no idea. I said, I suppose they're looking for natural gas, heard that they were talking about bringing the natural gas in. 
the next morning I was out with my walk with the dog and I realized that the cones were a little further in on our property than I expected if they went straight to the west so I started making calls called City Hall Brenton was in a meeting they gave me Barrett asked Barrett if he knew what was going on he directed me to Jim and Cass County because it's Cass County of course it's their road so technically a lot of that goes to the Cass County I got a hold of Cass County got a hold of Brian Busta he tells me that um, he wasn't sure that there was any permits but like he said it could have been done January February he wasn't sure and when I explained to him that they were further in on my property than what the easement is he didn't agree with me and I said no I remember what I signed in paperwork that they were on my property if they go straight west he pulled up the documents and he said I believe you're correct I said I don't have time to go out there and argue I'm out of town because I was on business work that day traveling in the meantime they come up to the neighbor and uh, asked where our septic systems were because they didn't want to hit them and he asked what was going on and from his previous job experience he kind of knew the utilities and he told them that no they were going to be on our properties and he asked that they recheck <coughs> he came back again told them that they were using a two inch line instead of six inch line which they originally told him for natural gas and they argued some more about where the property lines were so they all left in the meantime I got Brian to come out and talk to my neighbor Terry because at that point all the construction people left all the people that were um, marking left and they would have been on our property had we not stopped them but when I first called Brian his comment was to call the Cass County Sheriff and have the contract removed and we could fight it with our attorneys we should not have to do that we should not have to bother the Cass County to remove people from our property so the next night I came home and I happened to see the contractor drilling more holes to the development in Maple Lakes. So I drove down there. I said, I got out of the car and he says, you're the woman from the corner, aren't you? He said, yes, I am. He says, well, he goes, didn't mean to uh, mess your Cheerios up. I said, you didn't mess my Cheerios up. I said, we have a problem. He says, well, don't worry. He says, we've moved it. We're going to the north side of County 17 rather than the south side of County 17. <laughs> so I asked him point blank who had told him to drill that hole there and to run that line west. He told me the city planner was out and told him to run that line. So my question is, Barrett, do you remember telling this gentleman that he could run the natural gas line on my property? Would you like me to answer that, sir? Please, because I don't know what to... The answer is no. I, I never received that question. I never gave that response. Yeah, so it would seem odd. So this is natural gas. It's a utility? Yes. It's not actually city services. It's like Excel Energy or... Excel. Excel? Okay. The thing I that... Con I saw their truck out this morning when I took The thing that concerns me is, tonight I came home, and they had two trucks from the same company on the south side of the road again, my husband went to walk out to him. They both took off as soon as he started to walk out towards them. Okay, so which contractors is this we're talking about? They're out of St. Cloud, but I don't have a name. I got a picture of the truck here. Hang on. <laughs> well, I just don't want to know who this is then, because yeah. this isn't mm -hmm. making sense why they're... You know, I know NC3 is working with ReadyTech, but I don't yeah. know who this is. Yeah, this, <coughs> this is different. Yeah. Huh? This is gas, yeah. MVP. MVP. Okay. Yeah, all right, we'll, we'll have to... And I understand that that's probably coming out of county, but I don't want nobody buying any more of my land because I'm not selling any more of my land. And I'm not calling the sheriff unless I absolutely have to because it's not his problem to take somebody off that shouldn't be there in the first place. Okay. Yeah. Well, we'll try to find out what's going on there because right now I don't know. So, thank yeah, you. Yeah, that's, that's not coming from the city. <clears throat> um, interesting, though. Yeah, well, like I said, we'll, let's try and get on that tomorrow and find out what's mm -hmm. going on with those guys. And then I, I do agree with Lynette when it comes to the post office. I, can we make sure that we are using mm -hmm. Harris? Because like she said, it is tax dollars that, or sales tax yeah. that we can have. And 
it is important to be supporting our local. I'm questioning why we would be mailing from Fargo in the first place. I don't know. Is it because of the I, printer? Yeah, I believe that one we used a different different printer, quicker, or er, er, expecting a quicker turnaround time to get that out. And as part of them printing it, they were able to mail it at oh, that well, time. They yeah. They so they, they would use, uh, I believe, the EDDM approach. And yeah. as for the permit, the city, we, we got rid of our permit. So we don't, because it was the same price to go with a permit versus not. So we decided we'd just use the EDDM approach just like everybody else would. So we don't mail. have a. So he does not have a permit anymore, anymore in my does understanding. Does the, the everyday direct mailing still though count if it goes out of forest? So it goes out of forest. So it really yeah. yeah. forest. You probably have to go, if you go bring it to the horse post office. So like uh, horse happenings, for example, we take that to the post office and we'll get it from the printer then take it over to the post office and have it delivered out of the horse post office. So uh, that one uh, mailer though the was from it, like I said, a different printer and the printer offered to mail it from uh, right after they printed out, mm -hmm. mail it from there so they could get it out quick. Um, but we'll follow up on it. Okay, so, just in the future, yeah. I think she makes a really good yeah. valid point there. So. All right, anybody else got anything they want to talk about tonight? Once, maybe twice. All right, we'll move on to number eight. Ross, you have the floor. Good evening, everybody. Hi, Ross. I will run over the numbers and everything real quick. Deputy Keller put this together, so I'll try my best not to ruin his fine work. Uh, 156 calls for service. Uh, the numbers that jumped out to me, there are crashes, six crashes. That's a few more than usual. Uh, I think they're all pretty minor. Uh, a lot more traveling around in July it tends to be a little more of a busy month for everybody. So say, I think that's kind of a uptick is kind of expected, but kind of stood out to me a little bit. Uh, the two drug related calls. Um, one, I believe was like a personal use <coughs> amount of like marijuana found in the car. The other, I think deputy color uh, associated to a search warrant that was done in town. I think City Hall was told about that right after it happened. I'm not sure if you guys got mm -hmm. told, and I can't really go much more into that because people who are much more important than me will get very angry with me if I do. I'll read Deputy Keller's uh, paragraph. Uh, this month we experienced 156 calls for service as America's birthday is in July, which is often celebrated by igniting small, colorful explosions. <coughs> there were eight fireworks calls. Several of these calls resulted in small fires requiring Horace Fire to respond and extinguish. With being such a dry year, it seemed as though most were enjoying the fireworks responsibly. Uh, myself and Deputy Keller worked together to identify and cite three individuals in rural Horace who were not enjoying fireworks responsibly and blowing things up. These individuals left a huge mess or all issued uh, $500 citations for littering. Um, the township that was just west on 52nd Avenue, a few miles. Um, so the township brought it up to Deputy Keller's attention. Uh, he checked it out. He had actually met with the individuals the night before because he caught them lighting off fireworks and there was a bunch of trash in an approach and he's there like, no, that's not ours. Uh, through the use of some social media, be careful what you put on social media people, mm -hmm. I was able to um, have video and photos of these people doing exactly what they said they weren't doing. So they all got uh, the biggest ticket we said we give, which is $500 outside of truck reg. So good. Um, they left a heck of a mess and a lot of people had to go through a lot of time to clean it up. So. We took it pretty serious. Uh, and the miscellaneous, I thought this was pretty cool. Deputy Keller, um, recently we were getting our, our bicycle patrol unit back together. Uh, we haven't had bicycles in, in city parks in the county for a very long time. Uh, Deputy Keller volunteered to be a part of that. Um, he intends to uh, use them around town as much as he can. Obviously our, our main duty is just regular patrol, so he can't do the bicycle every day. Um, I don't think anyone wants to see him in those shorts every day. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Craig. I, I do motorcycle patrol, so I wear really tight pants. He does bicycle patrol, he wears shorts. So, mm -hmm. And then again, a little blurb about the technology that was found. So um, overall, uh, fireworks were very good to the city. I think it's attributed a lot to the fact that Horace does allow fireworks for a period of time, that people kind of stay within those rules. There was a few citizens who, which we spoke about before, who weren't so, um, confined with those rules and thought a couple weeks afterwards was appropriate to light him off. So we, whether or not us talking to him helped that or him just running out of fireworks, I don't really know, but right. I would hate to take a, take, take credit for again last, I don't, all right, well, the railroad me when I'm saying good things. I'm just kidding. Um, 
Yeah, fireworks overall went very well. Um, I didn't work that night. I think Deputy Keller might have worked that night, uh, but I didn't see anything major. So again, the little fires are all pretty minor, nothing yeah. crazy. So yeah, we did try and tell people you know be careful with that and they do it later a little bit, so there might be a little bit of moisture mm -hmm. coming back. I suppose in the heat of the day, but yeah, yeah. good. All right, anybody any questions elsewhere? Do you guys have extra staff for uh, being days? Uh, so far, it's me. We have some reserves who usually come out for that. Um, they have until the day to sign up for that through our reserve program. So whether or not they will, I don't know. I work both days. I'm gonna see if Keller will come out. Um, he's on nights, so I don't expect him to come out at 8 a.m. That poor guy, that'd be unfortunate. But um, we're getting as many as we can. I'm, I think Sheriff is out of town um, on vacation that week. I'm sure our, our chief deputy will show up or our, our captain for patrol. Um, they've been asking about it for a few weeks now. So. While I don't know yet, I don't have a concrete answer, I'm sure there'll be more than just a few of us. So, and, and, and anything you, sorry, go ahead. It's different this year, so mm -hmm. the parade is later. So yep. really it's gonna be more of a later afternoon. And I think for the parade, I registered us up. I, I, I said two squad cars and people walking. So I know me and Keller for sure will be in it. I for sure will, I'm guessing Keller will, I can't speak for him. And then the Sheriff likes having folks walk next to the cars and throw candy and, and goodies out too. So I know we'll, we'll have a presence for that at least. And if you guys, Anything else comes up, if you have anything, any events you might want us to be a part of or help with, we can just let me know. We'll do that. Yeah, Otherwise, I'll be around all day. Um, what are reckless driving? Is that just like stop sign rolling? So reckless driving calls, well, the way we categorize that is, is what dispatch calls a reckless driving call. So dispatch, when they dispatch calls out to us, there's like a hundred different call types, whether it's domestic or fireworks or they have like an airplane crash, which I don't ever want to see, which was a recent one up west. But well, they have different call types to kind of tell us what we're going to. So we just compile all the reckless driving calls. Usually what that entails is someone calls in another driver and said, hey, this person is safer on wall, for instance. Uh, a truck is speeding on wall. It's, they're driving recklessly. So we go investigate those. Um, very rarely do deputies call out reckless driving calls. You gotta be going pretty quick for us to call it reckless. Uh, but usually they're, they're initiated by citizens calling in saying, hey, I saw this reckless person and then we Usually uh, the way we, we respond to those is we go to that area to see if we can find that vehicle or uh, run the license plate and find out where that person lives mm -hmm. and try to talk to them about it at their home if it's local or we can find them. And then we'll throw in an extra patrol request in our information sharing system so other deputies know uh, where the so reckless driver is going. like on. that, when I text you that one night mm -hmm. about that vehicle, would that have been like a reckless driving if I would have actually called? Yeah, yeah, dispatch would have, it would have got qualified as a reckless driving call. Um, Again, it's fine to text me, that's no problem. Um, but obviously if I don't answer right away because I'm on my day off, which I wish <coughs> I had my phone on me at all times, but my wife would strangle me. Yeah. Um, I, it, you know, it's, it's always good to, we, me and Craig both really like when people text us, mm -hmm. but if you can't get a hold of us, don't, you don't, you're not going behind our back calling dispatch, you know, please do if we don't get back to you in time and, and we'll, we'll, we'll work better at trying to get more on time with when you, calls, yeah. when you guys text us. So. I would, I know that the young people in the community probably aren't watching city um, <laughs> council meetings, but I would say I was like really, really upset seeing somebody whipping complete donuts mm -hmm. out on the road by my place. And it was loud and it was scary. And I just, yeah, that stuff can't be happening. Well, and, then, and that's, that's exactly the kind of thing that what defines reckless, right? That's the mm -hmm. kind of thing there. Someone's gonna get hurt. Maybe someone's, a kid on a bike isn't being attentive. They come around a corner. Here's a truck whipping his rear end around, and the worst happens. So, yeah, um, I know it seems like it's a rural, you know, area because you're mm -hmm. looking at a field, but like you're still in town. Like this is yeah, dead center yeah. in the middle of town now. Yeah. So, yeah, don't ever be afraid to call anything in. We we're not bothered by it. It's like I said, if I'm not working and you call, and I hear later that you had called. That doesn't mm -hmm. bother me at all. It's I, I just want everyone to be safe and, and feel like you're you're getting the service you want and need. And, Anybody got anything else? Thank you. Yep, thanks, sir. Thanks, everyone. All right, Barrett, you've got number nine. Okay. Uh, what you have in front of you is a request to mitigate a nuisance violation at 7820 Bob Rose Way. Uh, staff received a resident complaint at the beginning of July. Um, and when we went to investigate, we did, in fact, identify nuisance violations. Uh, as seen in the pictures here, uh, we verified the presence of building materials and items classified as junk. Uh, afterward, we tried to work with the property owner to resolve the issue. However, when those deadlines passed, uh, as required by city ordinance, uh, section 150312, 
Uh, we sent the first letter giving the property owner seven days to uh, mitigate the nuisance. Uh, I returned on July 23rd to verify that it wasn't mitigated, so I sent a second letter on July 23rd, uh, giving them until August 13th to mitigate the issue, otherwise it would come before the city council. So uh, the property owner was given five days notice uh, of the hearing uh, tonight. Unfortunately, when I checked today, the, the nuisance still isn't mitigated, so uh, staff would like to request that uh, the city council uh, approve of our recommendation to enter the property and abate the nuisance and assess all the costs and expenses in, uh, incurred. I guess the property is authorized by the city ordinance section 150314. That's been sitting there for a while, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> And you had no calls back or no calls from the property owner on that? Uh, there was some email correspondence um, where they had questions, um, inquiries, but I was pretty adamant that they had to be mitigated by the dates. Is that theirs? It looks like a man basket for a forklift. <laughs> I believe it's scaffolding and a pallet <coughs> and some other it's been left there for an awful long time. I was going to say, is, is that their property or is that contractor property that just needs uh, to be disposed of? Property owner claims it's contractor property, but our city ordinance doesn't specify the ownership of the materials or what's defined as junk. It's up to the property owner to mm -hmm. uh, store it inside an enclosed building. <coughs> so if a contractor left this on my yard, I would be responsible to move that? Uh, if someone were to file a complaint, yes. You're kidding. How in the heck do I, little old me, without a piece of equipment, move that? Call the contractor and get his crap off your lap. Do you know who the contractor is? If it's been there forever? Yeah, the city doesn't get involved in civil issues. We just deal with the uh, no. nuisance. I don't know who it would have been. No. You know, we never saw, just I mean, noticed it's been there for an awful long time. I'm very capable of, you know, throwing together some pallets and getting rid of them, but that big piece of metal take a little more of doing, you know? Mm -hmm. hmm. They have communicated with you? They have. <coughs> they didn't say that they'd get rid of it, huh? They kept on saying that they would, but it just never materialized for some reason. I'm not sure. But they're saying it's a contractor that did it? Um, well, I never got into who owned the property. I just got into removing the uh, junk and building materials from the property. Barrett, when was the last time you talked to him? I mean, what, the email exchange or when was the last was communication? Last week, maybe. Okay. And then it stopped and there hasn't been any more communication since. No, no. So the last time you talked, what was the, what was it about? What did you, what did you guys discuss at that point? She made some uh, comment or question about if it's not hers, then how does the ordinance work? I explained that the city doesn't involve itself in issues between civil disputes between parties. Mm -hmm. We look at uh, city ordinance as it states that the property owner is responsible for maintaining the property and ensuring that those things are inside. She made some comment about how she would be able to remove it from the property, but her husband was in Sturgis until Friday, which I I believe it was maybe last Friday. Yeah. Okay. Is there a name on it at all? Any place on it? Because I work for a company, we've lost a couple of assets right there. And if it's ours, we'll come and get it. I don't know if there's any, I don't remember don't seeing see any label on, on it. It just looks like an old basket. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, there's some wood there it's too. There's only a serial number right down on the bottom of it. Yeah. Journey is made by Hogan out in Castleton. Mm -hmm. No, I've seen these before. I've seen them all over. And I'm yeah. just Give me the address. I'll try to buy it. See if it's one of ours. Since you talked to Barrett, mm -hmm. oh. we can get you that address. Okay. It's well, 7822 <coughs> Royal Grove's Way, which is out west here, west of town. It would be the second <coughs> entrance into Lost River, going south. So her husband was gone like Friday, three days ago? I don't remember or what the When Sturgis was. So. Stated it's still going on through this, through this Friday. Hmm. No, we should probably give them a chance to get back if that's all that happened. I mean, that is 
something that we need to be cognizant of. Um, understand that, there, that somebody's complained about it. If you want, if you want to take a look at it yeah, here I'm and just see. All right. Tell you what. Why don't we table this for a couple of weeks? And let's have another conversation. See what it looks like. Um, Barrett, get back in touch with them um, and just see. Maybe find out when her husband is coming back, and they can have another conversation about this. And then let's get an update in a couple of weeks. I'll run out there to take a look, see if we yeah. can figure well, out. We've put some identification on there that nobody really knows where it's at. So well, no. so I mean, so that might be a good thing. You go take a look and see right. if that's mm -hmm. yours. And then okay. you found one. <laughs> you right. found yeah. one. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's go that route then. Yep. If Councilmember Bites is going to go up there, knock on the door for someone just go on their property. Right. Always. There's, yeah. there's, there's no house. There's no house. <laughs> there's just a lot. No, there's not. There's <laughs> always a good door. Let me pretend, Doc. <laughs> Do I need to yeah. check the next door? Yeah, just don't go on someone's property without yeah. consent. That's Do we idea. have a contact number for this person? Lucas, it, I believe it's actually with, like right at the edge of the lot versus uh, the boulevard. So you contact, to talk to Barrett after we get yeah. down here. We can probably get you a number. Yeah, we'll get it. We'll get it figured out. All right. So let's do that. Then we'll talk about this in a couple weeks again. All right. Let's go on to ten. Jim, you got this one. Yes. It was brought to the city's attention that there are no street signs in the Vista Industrial Mission, and the uh, <coughs> entity that brought it to the city's attention is not receiving any packages due to the lack of signs. Um, the signs are not part of the original contract for some reason. And typically this work was found earlier would have been change order into the project but final payment had been made to the contractor and the construction contract is closed so in discussions with the city and public <coughs> um, i was advised to solicit quotes to install the signs at the request of the city i solicited two contractors north star safety and 3d specialties for quotes to install signs uh, the low quote was from north star safety and price uh, amount of four thousand four hundred seventy five dollars 3D specialties was 166, I believe, more than that, so really close. And this expense uh, should come from the contingencies of the construction project. So, so let's get it done. Yes. Motion That's what I meant. Yeah. Second. Okay, Chelsea, Jeff, all in favor say aye. 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 Yeah, let's get that squared away, Jim. Move on to 11. So typically when a subdivision reaches a certain build out, we apply the final lift of asphalt. Lost River addition is to the point now where we are at 80% plus complete. So we are in the process of looking at installing the final asphalt lift. We do have um, money from the original bond that will be used for this final lift of asphalt. We also have some patching work to be done and we have some milling to be done. If I can find my this is pretty much like first and second edition. This right? is no. the first edition through the sixth edition minus the fifth. If you can follow along with that. Minus the fifth, okay. So we have oh, here we go. Jim, we have Lost River Seventh coming before us. Seventh is south of the fifth edition, and this is fifth edition isn't included in this. So what, what, what I'm getting at though is do you want to put a, a final lift down when they're about to go back there with all the heavy equipment? So right now we do because we're going to be using the first and second entrances, not the third entrance and Lost River 7th has an access coming off of the diversion road. Are we going to force contractors to use that? Are we going to? Yep. We haven't gotten to the point on Lost River 7th okay. where we're going to get to that yet. Okay. So okay. right now we're just looking over getting the final lift of asphalt on the first, second, third, fourth, and sixth editions. So that includes Lost River Road, Diedrich Bullet Drive, Firefly Lane, Wild Rose Way, and Goldfinch Drive. And there are four areas that needs some patch, patch work. So um, project co cost for this is 426,000. And like I said, there is that money in the first assessment district. So there'd be no additional assessment to the residents for this final asphalt lift. 
Okay. So basically, it's to go through the motions here, approve the plan, and direct the auditor to advertise for bids. Is this something that we can probably still get done this fall? That's the plan. There going to be enough capacity. Mm -hmm. That's the that. plan. And this was mm -hmm. done at the end of the year on purpose to allow most of the home building to be done yeah. this yeah. year and to get most of the uh, basements dug, that type of work. So mm -hmm. what would be remaining wouldn't be the heavy trucks like you had talked about. So this yep. was done later in the year by design. Okay. As well, quantities. Oh, and then we have uh, miscellaneous patching on three, four locations in the city. It's being bid with, with <coughs> There's one down on Park Drive, one down here on 8th Street, and then two spots up in Chestnut around some inlets. We're going to do some um, skim patching over those to last through the winter. Well, I'll give you an update on that and the update yeah. as to what's coming with Chestnut. And the last area was down on the entrance into Prairie View on Five and a Half Street. So we're going to bid this along with the overlay project to capitalize on the economies of scale and, and not have a little miscellaneous project floating right. around out there. Yeah, so we don't have to sit and pay for setup costs and get them there yeah. and do it. The the costs would be separated out yeah, from the separate. assessment district, so we would right. cover those costs through the sales tax dollars. For Being our marshalling equipment here, it's this, yes. this cheaper. So. Yeah. All right. Do we have any questions on this one? Otherwise, I'm going to look for a motion uh, to approve the plan and specs and then direct the auditor to do them separately. I'll make that motion and direct the auditor to take those numbers separately. Uh, but you got to do it by specs. Are you doing the approved plans and specs first? Yep. Yes. Yes. Approved plans and specs first. So, okay. sir, made a motion on that. And I only did a second. So, all in favor of that, say aye. 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 All right. That one passes. Same thing, direct an auditor to advertise for bids. So moved. Okay, Chelsea makes a motion. Can I get a second? Yeah, I'll second. Uh, a second. All in favor say aye. 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 <coughs> number 12. Jim, I think you got that one too. Yep. I do. So the first thing in item number 12 is the preliminary engineering report for list station SA 13. This is the one that's up by Deer Creek Parkway. We'll service the areas of Deer Creek Parkway and Horseshoe Bend in the immediate future, in the immediate, and Riverdale and areas south of Deer Creek Parkway in the future. This uh, project has a estimated project cost of $809,000. A preliminary assessment shows that uh, you know, about $2,000 per unit would be assessed. If you look at the report, we did provide a map towards the end that has the special assessments on there and how the breakout went. We had a lot of discussion in the past as to, in the past meeting as to where the breakout would be. If you can bring that up after further analysis, you'll see on the, uh, it's, quite, it's a ways in there if you wanna keep going. Uh, keep going. Location, district boundary, there's the existing land use, future land use. Estimated costs, there are preliminary assessments based on the modified each. And then this here, right there, you want to blow that one up? Nope, down. Right there, that map there. So the areas in red right now would be a no benefit. The areas in green would be a commercial benefit, which is in the future. And then we have, I mean, the dark green, which would be an immediate, that's the Deer Creek Estates, Horseshoe Bend the area that is south of Deer Creek Parkway and the commercial along 64th. So those would be considered to be more of an immediate. And Riverdale would be a future assessment. We don't show any jumping of the river up into the Ponderosa or any of that. And we have some on 64th Avenue provided that the Special Assessment Commission goes along with, goes along with this when we present it to them. This is um, very preliminary based on estimated project costs and based on our um, idea of how things are going to develop. This is based on existing units. So if there's a one house on it, it's a one right now. For the commercial, we used some factoring based on the future land use map, or not the future land use map, but the comp plan and the future land use map to get ourselves, get us a equivalent unit. It's just a starting point. We haven't typically done these regional improvements by and each, but on this one, I felt like it made the most sense than breaking it out by area because it includes commercial. Commercial is, a, is something we haven't had to deal with as far as assessment. And 
where the developers adjacent to this land provided us with lots, we were able to count them, just give it an equivalent. But we're commercial, it's much, much, much larger lots. So we'll just have to see how that plays out or if we get some more guidance from them. But this is my best, get, my best assumption as to the way that it's gonna be built out and the way that we can assess this project. So. I like this map. It really gives some good visual to how this is done. I know we're still working through the assessment process, but um, contrary to what I saw at the last meeting with a lot of questions, this answers a lot of those questions. And we have the assessment list in there, the spreadsheet, but it's a little bit easier to see on a, on a map, mm -hmm. especially when we're looking at it by the each. And then you can see what parcels are where and what they're contributing. And was the was the new assessment committee involved? With Not at this Not point. So all we're doing right now is just getting the basics of the project put together, establishing a cost, and working out what a potential assessment could be if the project goes forward. So uh, once the project gets built, then we bring it back to the special assessment commission and have them assess the costs at that time. So. Oh. So we're working on incorporating some of the suggestions in the new special assessment policy as we go along with the policy being in draft form. Yeah, so to emphasize, this hasn't gone on for bid yet, so you guys have an 809. That's, you know, what, that's our estimate right estimate, now. Yeah. yeah, so we won't know until the bids come in if we're below. Right. Hopefully, we'll so be below. when we get bids, we'll bring them back and we'll yep. rework the assessment based on the, number, the construction costs that we had in our estimated project cost, and we will bring it back before you award the project for yep. construction. Mm -hmm. So the two parcels that are inside of the, what looks to be the, the commercial there that are not contributing? One is a park and one is a school. Got it, thank you. And they can go to Southfield Farm Slope Station. Yep. So. I appreciate these surveys too. I'm scrolling through all of them. Um, I had looked at them previously and I was just refreshing myself at how many yes I want to connect, no I don't, and possible give me some more information. Right, yeah, and those, are, those surveys are, are a little bit dated at the moment. Uh, yeah. There wasn't a lot of, of uh, yes, but there was a lot of we'd like more information. Yeah, and, so, and in particular people just want to know the cost. They yep. want to know what they're going to have to yep. pay. So this map is extremely helpful to them. And I, I see that it's, it's dated previously, but this really gives us a good direction of what people want and what they're interested in, instead of just moving forward with projects and you know having a bunch of people show up saying no, 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 no. This gives us a really good <coughs> thing, uh, if people bother to even fill them out. But it, it looks like we've got a pretty good handful here. I'm pleased with this. I like the communication. And you'll notice in there too, there's a request for the Horseshoe Bend Trailer Park to yes. uh, get onto a municipal system. There was, uh, they have a single cell lagoon that doesn't drain anywhere, and our wet cycle was getting to the point of overtopping. And they have a, basically a um, directive from the state to abandon that, abandon that lagoon and get onto a municipal system now that the SSL is <coughs> in place. So um, that's part of the reason that we're doing the report and the plans today is um, with the next council meeting three weeks away, it really shoots us in the shoots our schedule. So we wanted to get it going, get it in the process because this should be completed yet this year too. So this is just a lift station some, and some piping. It's not a big project. And you say it should it has to be completed this year, is that right? It has to be completed this year according to the DEQ. Yeah. Yep. And otherwise there'll be fines levied to the horseshoe and trailer park. So there is a push to get this one done. Yep. Uh, part of the reason it's so late in the year is we had some. We had um, a lot of discussions with the adjacent landowners to try to determine the best location <coughs> for it, to try to determine the best service area for this lift station. And we did that in order to, like I've preached many times, is to minimize the number of lift stations and maximize the area that can run to it. So we wanted to make sure that the area to the north, the area to the south, and the Horseshoe Bend and the Riverdale areas were all addressed and we put it in a place that serviced them the best. And this will suffice per the letter that they had sent previously <coughs> for their formal request for city yeah. sewer, which I'm looking at right here. Yeah. So there's been some renditions that have come from the, I should say some variations that have come from the trailer park. 
Um, the letter that we got there is that guy or that owner has sold out now, but um, originally we were going to put a uh, gravity system throughout the whole trailer park and the new owner isn't as worried about the uh, septic tanks and the pumps in that trailer park. He's just wanting a treatment source. So he said it was going to be too costly for, to put the whole system through there, which is fine. It's private. It's not a city system. So we're providing that point where he can, instead of pumping his effluent to the lagoon, he can turn it, take it to the city. We treat it through Fargo. Okay. Thank you. All right. So I, I guess I have a question. Um, so like north of the river on Cheyenne, those houses we're looking for um, connection? Um, the north, on the east side of the of 17, yeah. They weren't, I don't believe they were included in the original, in the original survey, at least not that I could find in 2018, so. But they have, you know, they have been, there has been conversations on. There has been there. some conversations um, on the east side of the river and on the west side of the, of the river. There hasn't been enough to um, make it economical to get under the river. That's our hurdle right now is getting underneath the Cheyenne and getting what we can back to the south. So provisions will be made with this project at Riverdale that they could come underneath the river, but that would probably have to be a forced system to get it under the river. So so probably another lift station over there. Or we had looked at it at one time doing a hybrid system of grinder pumps and a low pressure system where they would just pump into it and it would come underneath the river into the gravity system at Riverdale. Okay. Any other questions? Otherwise, uh, unless anybody's got any questions on A, B, C, or D, we'll go through them one at a time. Motion to approve the engineering report. Okay. Second. Chelsea makes a motion. Jeff does a second. All right. All in favor for uh, approving the preliminary engineering report, say aye. 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 All right. Motion carries. It's direct the engineer to prepare plans and specs. I'll make that motion. Sorry, I'll make a motion. Can I get a second? Yeah, I can. Okay, does a second. All right, all in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Plan, approving plans and specs. Can I get a motion for that, please? Yeah, I'll make that motion to approve second. plans and specs. Okay, Sarah makes a motion. Chelsea does a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Right, that motion carries. And we'll direct the auditor to advertise for bids. I'll make a motion to second. direct the auditor to okay. bids. And okay, we make a motion. Jeff does a second. All in favor say aye. 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 All right. Motion carries. All right, we'll get that in the works then, Jim, so we can get on with that. That'd be great. All right, Barrett, you got number 13. Okay. All right, so what you have before you is a joint application from uh, Forest Park District and the City of Forest to rezone Lot 1, Block 6 of uh, Cup Creek Edition for the property shown on the, the map uh, to change the zoning from PA agricultural to PF public facilities for the purpose of future anticipated park development. So back on August 2nd, 2021, uh, this was park property. Uh, the lot split floor split the property in half so that the city would retain the retention pond and the city would continue uh, to develop the uh, other portion of the lot into a park. Uh, being that the current zoning of the lot is agricultural, it requires a 75 foot front uh, setback and 50 foot front and rear <coughs> side setbacks. This would create issues for future park development. So to be proactive, uh, the park and the city are rezoning both lots to PF public facilities so that the only <coughs> setback on the lot would be a 10 foot setback uh, from the north side. Uh, property owner notification letters were sent out. Staff didn't receive any comments. Staff feels that this adheres to the uh, 2045 uh, City Forest Cop Plan and that it meets all the zoning ordinance requirements. And staff recommends approval as uh, shown on the next slide. Uh, please let me know if you have any questions. Okay. Uh, Russ, did you have any comments on that at all? No, this. Yeah, and that I don't just ask him. This is just pro forma. Yep. Do we, do we want to bring up our discussion? And I don't know if this is the right step in the process. Maybe you can guide me, being somewhat new this year to council. Um, the one concern that I have is having a park in such close proximity to a body of water. 
up in West Fargo all last year. We heard nothing but issues with kids going swimming in these things and drowning. And I don't want that to happen here. And I can tell you that my child and even me as a kid, uh, on these hot days, it would have looked pretty appealing to go swimming in something like that. And I wonder what step in the process do we bring up the possibility of maybe a, a barricade or a fence or something around that body of water so that there's no drowning risk. I would suggest we have a staff discussion on how we want to move forward with city-owned uh, drainage ponds, and maybe we could figure out a way to uh, get that implemented. If we could do that, I think that would be helpful, just because I, I'm very concerned about the safety of kids in our community. Obviously, the safety of everyone in our community is paramount, but these little ones, you know, it just breaks your heart when you hear something like that. So mm -hmm. if there's something we could do there, I'm open. This, this pond does, it was also dug to a depth where there's recreation opportunity with the pond. Perfect. So in regards to like fishing, things like that. Okay. Not not swimming, but you know, we could have a conversation staff wise and touch base with you about that. And if there needs to be any recommendations to council on that, and have a deeper and, conversation and, about ponds. Cause there are some ponds that are truly just storm water. Yep. This one and a few others in that Cub Creek area uh, the intentions were for them to be a little more than just storm water to have recreation. And I, I completely tool. agree with that idea. I know that Fargo has, you know, that Woodhaven, they've got ice fishing tournaments yep. and stuff for the kids every year, and it's all kinds of fun. But during the summertime, there's a concern there. And, and I don't know what the yep. best way to approach that is, but I'd like to have a little further discussion. Yeah. So has more time. Should it be possible to fence it and have your fishing dock maybe have a fishing proper, pier or something yeah. you know with a, a fence you can cast off of or something I don't know but yeah open to talking about that okay. I'll open up a public hearing on this behind <coughs> do so if anybody else wants to comment on this feel free um, yeah I agree too you know look at that to see what we can do to protect that pond. This one will be used for fishing at some point yeah. when we get it done and every, everything that we're talking about. So we'll have to have some features. Well, and I think we've that. got we've got a couple more coming too that right, are gonna be like this. One. So maybe we should think about that yeah, moving right. forward, you know? How do we want to do it? Do it the same for all of them. Yeah. yeah. Good. Yeah. Okay. I'll go with the public hearing one more time. Anybody got anything you want to say about it? Going once, going twice. All right, I'll close the public hearing on that. Um, anything else you guys want to discuss on this one? I'm going to look for a motion to approve the reason. I can make that motion. Okay, anyone makes a motion for the reason? Second. Chelsea does a second. All right, all in favor say aye. 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 I was going to just mention to a lot of people that live on these ponds have fences in their backyards. Yeah. So if we were going to put up a fence around it, that they could just connect to, you know, that maybe be the way to go. So. Yeah. So I think we can talk about that a little bit more. Yeah. Just kind of see what we want to do with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know there's not enough examples around the metro here that we could go off of and yeah. come up with a plan or a scheme and use that and work around that. All right, so we're not doing 14, go to 15. Barry, you got that one. Okay, you don't mind bringing up the uh, PowerPoint again? Okay, so what you have before you is an application for three things, uh, a plat, a zone change, and a future land use map change. Uh, this was submitted by uh, Maple Lakes LLC, Eagle Ridge Development, and uh, the City of Forest with the feature land use map change component. So uh, the first application for a plat, the applicant is seeking approval of a proposed plat of Maple Lakes, uh, Maple Lake Estate Second Edition that encompasses approximately 18.92 acres, and this would be a replat of the southwest portion of Maple Lake Estates Edition as shown on the, the map above you there. Uh, so this replat would adjust the lot boundaries of 60 existing lots to create 20 more lots uh, for a total of 80 lots. Uh, this wouldn't affect the depth of the lot, but it would alter the widths from around 70 feet 
to about 50 feet wide and 60 feet on uh, corner lots. Uh, the applicant stated that this request has been made for several reasons, including uh, creating housing market diversity, uh, offsetting property uh, fill costs, uh, to take the properties out of the 1% chance floodplain, and to reduce special assessment costs. Uh, the proposed zone change request is from uh, R4 to R6, and this would have to do with uh, minimum lot size requirements. The proposed lots are smaller than the R4 minimum lot size. Uh, in terms of a future land use map change, uh, staff is just proposing that the area that's being affected uh, would be changed from suburban to compact development uh, to allow for this type of development. Uh, I, I guess what I'd really like to point out with this development is east of the proposed uh, replat area, you still maintain those existing lots, which staff feels would kind of act as a buffer or transition from uh, more dense housing to less dense housing. Uh, staff sent out uh, property owner notification letters. We, staff didn't receive any comment. However, at the planning commission meeting, we did have residents who did attend, provide comments. Uh, they stated uh, that their comments were against the proposal and they stated uh, concerns with parking and density. Uh, staff feels that this proposal meets the 25 uh, Horus comprehensive plan and it meets all the zoning ordinances. Our requirements and we recommend approval as uh, shown on the last slide. How many residents? Uh, two. There were two? From the same household, correct. Of the neighboring properties that came and protested? Correct. Can I ask which property owners actually had notice on that? Sign in. The property owner notification letters are sent within 300 feet of the uh, affected property, and those are sent by mail. So I've talked to more than two, because that's the development I live in. And I know I don't believe any one person there is for it. The question I have is the infrastructure that is already in place is set up for the existing is that correct? I would defer that uh, question to our city engineer. James yes. shaking yes. head, yes. Thank you, sir. So to change this, they are going to have to change the existing infrastructure, is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I should also note, too, I apologize. Um, at the Planning Commission meeting, the Planning Commission voted to uh, deny uh, both the plat zone change and future land use map change. Russ, you want to kind of elaborate on that a little bit, just for everybody here? Please. Please, yes. I have a list of the mailings and all that. <coughs> yeah, the, uh, one of the main issues is if we change that to R6, does that mean that everything else that's going to fill in next to that R6 is going to be R6? And you know we're going about this a little on the the backwards side. The land use map is for suburban currently, and so what we, part of this is is the desire to change the land use map so we can put in different uh, zoning. Mm -hmm. So we can rezone it to something that the current land use map doesn't foresee. I think if we want to do that, we should have a broader, first of all, a broader discussion on the land use map. And we, you're going to see one uh, discussion later for a different piece of property. Uh, we don't want to do the whole thing at one time. Mm -hmm. And we haven't gotten down into this area yet. But part of it is, so if we change this to R6, does that mean we're going to change the rest of it to the uh, west to R6? Are we going to have... Uh, uh, yes, we have County Road 100 in there, but we're going to have everything dumping out into it. Right. 
everything dumping out into it until we we possibly at some future time have some road along the diversion that we can connect maybe as a uh, a connector a collector if you will right mm -hmm. so right now i think right now what we're getting at here too there are they're considered r4 at this point right and they they are r4 it was yeah. platted that way and that's what we were thinking originally and now they weren't they're talking about changing to an r6 just for everybody here you want to explain what the difference is between or what can be done differently between r4 and r6 well the the difference is in the uh, the lot area uh, the size of the lot and the lot width on R6 the minimum lot width is 40 feet on R4 off the top of my head minimum lot width 70 feet okay okay yeah so what you're looking at here is smaller lot sizes in areas that we had originally planned to not do these smaller lot sizes yes we this is now if we want to if you if we want to look at the we do want to look at the future land use map to, to make some adjustments uh, in areas, but we haven't gotten down here yet and because we have higher priority things that we're, uh, we're looking at. Right. What was the reasoning? I mean, I'm assuming it's from going to R4 to R6, the reasoning is to try and get a few more lots out of there. They'll get 20 more lots. Yeah. The, and it, it spreads out the cost of their... Uh, the Lomar, if you will. Right, I understand that. But okay. I, when we originally were talking about this, they uh, they knew that we were kind of talking R four, right? And well, it was platted. Kind of, that's that's what we platted. That's what this whole thing was about. You know, we're changing it. And yes. Yeah, I have concerns about that as well. Yeah, me too. So, are some of those properties sold potentially already? No. Not, well, no, no. okay. Any. Let me rephrase that. They could be sold as R4s because they've been platted. They can't be sold as R6s. That's what we're talking about right now. And you can't sell a lot before it's platted. So if you want to change it, uh, the point is you can't sell R6 lots that don't exist. Was a representative from the developer here tonight? Would you like to speak? Yeah, Mayor, Council Members, John Eunice with Eagle Ridge Development. Um, I think Barrett did a pretty good job of explaining it. Um, you know, as we get a little further into the development, uh, we're looking at all these 70 foot lots. This is simply a, um, a, a proposal to tr uh, try to bring a little more housing diversity inside that neighborhood. Uh, 70 foot lots are going to have a certain amount of specials. Um, 50 foot lots inherently have less road in front of them and trying to hit a slightly different price point <coughs> within that property. I, I have a question. So when we had that meeting um, where we were talking about the, the lay of our town and how the consultants were kind of talking to us about how do you foresee our developments going up and how we're kind of backwards, you know, like how they were talking. Do you know what, do you remember what I'm talking about when they were talking about our developments or going from this lot size and then you have to kind of like figure out how they are flowing. I mean, it's not, these aren't really like in the heart of the town. They're kind of out skirts. Out skirts. You know what I mean? I just, I don't know, I kind of agree with the planning and zoning, their opinion on it. That's my opinion. I, I don't I'm, know if I'm- I'm looking at both here. Um, and I, I think you have a point, and I'm just going to state my mm -hmm. opinion. Um, I, too, am a large lot owner, and I struggle having small lots all around me, but I don't own the land all around me, and it's not something that I can buy up <coughs> arbitrarily, so I have to respect the people that do own the land around me. I will say this. Um, you're in an area where you've got some people that have been there for quite some time, and the map showed a good buffer, like you mentioned, Bear, where you've got the larger lots and then you've got the medium size and then you've got this proposal. 
This proposal appears to be in the center of the development, more so, so it really isn't going to have a huge impact on the people around it. However, um, I do have some questions about parking and access and things like that as well. So I'm curious to hear what some of the other council members have to say about Jim, I have that. a question for you. What are we looking at for differences in special assessments from a 70-foot lot to a 50-foot lot? Give me ballpark. Thousands, I don't think it'd be 10,000. You as a developer are trying to appeal more to <coughs> levels, different income Yeah, levels. I mean, I mean, typically what we see a difference just uh, from, from, we'll call it 50, 55 foot wide lots to 70 and 80 foot wide lots. We'll see sometimes between a 12 and $18,000 difference in specials. And a lot of that's just attributed to the area of the lot, which gets hit for storm sewer, and then the frontage that it has in terms of curb and gutter and asphalt roads. Um, you know, one thing I will point out is we are asking for R6, and the only reason we're asking for R6 is because there isn't really an in-between an R4 and an R6. We're not proposing 40-foot wide lots. You know, most all of these lots are greater than 50 feet. Most of them are 55 feet and plus. So, um, so while it, it, it sounds bad that it could be that, that there are 40-foot lots for an R6, that's not what we're proposing. Who's covering the cost for the change in the infrastructure that's currently out there? The only thing that's out there on one street is uh, sanitary sewer, and we should be able to work around those services and just have to add a couple. Um, and the, because there were six and eight lots in each of those blocks on each side of the street, so now it'd be going, you'd have to add two services per side. But there is no road in front of any of these lots. Let's, let's scroll up the map if we could so everybody here can see it. So those properties right now are the current zoning, the R4 zoning, 70 foot lots. Let's, is there an overlay with the, the new lots? There was a plat I saw. There you go. Yeah, you can kind of see where those lot lines are. They're <coughs> dashed line. I guess um, my comments would be, I think the tough thing is, you know, we're just seeing, we there's a lot of development land adjacent to this, and we're seeing just this little piece, and we're seeing it as an R6, so the, the thought is that we're seeing this, I mean, in my mind, how far does this go? Is it gonna be all R6? There's just no, you know, future to, to gauge what this is going to look like because if you're saying well this is going to be our r6 but then we're going to go back up you know um, everything that's coming to us is r6 yeah. everything yep and so it's just like you know there's probably about 14 houses in the same space as one house right adjacent to this and I know why they're doing it is because that's what is selling. These small houses are selling. Um, but I don't know. I mean, how many of it's just hard to just see mm -hmm. our community pepper with these tiny houses. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I mean, I will admit I like the original, the original class you guys had with the. Uh, R4 layout, I like that. This one I'm having a little struggle with. Well, and Jim, you said the specials wouldn't really change drastically. I don't disagree with what Mr. Yuna said as far as it could be $10,000 or better. So I just, I don't know for sure with these just off the top of my head. I don't. And nobody in the adjacent neighborhood was for. You said you talked to I everybody. talked to everybody except for the two houses in there and my <coughs> housing development, and not one person was for it. Okay. Lynette. Another thing to think about there, uh, you said you want 300 feet 
our lots out there are bigger. So if you only go 300 feet to the adjacent landowners, you aren't hitting a whole lot of landowners because most of us got two acres or whatever. So you aren't hitting a lot of landowners out there. So a lot of us weren't notified in that area. Um, I know speaking from our neighborhood, I would say our developer would agree that <coughs> there must be bigger lots. Okay. Any other? What yep. is the minimum frontage area that you can build in for us? Is it 40 feet? 40, 40 feet. It's 40. Well, it's dictated by the zoning district. Feet, or 6 is the minimum. Lot width requirements are based on the zoning district. So each zoning district has a lot width minimum. Uh, R6 is 40, R4 is 50. All right. Um, if we if we were to say, okay, this is an R6, how do we say, no, you can't do an R6 next to You know, how can we say, no, you can't fill this all in with R6? I guess that's... What? If I may, um, I know that came up at uh, at planning commission, and originally there was a look, a, a kind of a holistic look at this entire area um, in terms of allowing it. And I think uh, the path as we come forward at city commission is only saying this one little piece. So any other piece that wants to do it has to come forward and ask for something. Has to actually ask for it. It's not inherently given to them. So that's that's the. Yeah. The but difference. we have to be consistent. I mean, if, if we're saying a yes now, why would we be able to say no? Mm -hmm. I just don't think we could. I agree. It, it's just. I think it's a, it's just a little concerning to only see these little pieces of this development. If we saw it as a whole, um, I think it'd be a little more reassurance. But is there a master plan for this development? We have uh, just for our uh, the Maple Lakes. Um, I'm very early on. I think there were some schematics done, kind of a 10,000 foot view with some roads, but not really individual lot layouts or anything like that. Yeah, and that was yeah. Do you own property uh, in the rest of it? No. Okay, that's one of the no. questions I'm going to ask. <coughs> and yeah, you know, we were cognizant of this, which is why you know it isn't adjacent to any existing resident. I mean, we wanted to make sure that that there was that buffer and transition. And I agree with what Sarah said. I mean, it, I, I do feel it's important to be respectful to the landowners and what they want to do with their land. Um, so it's, it's a tough, it's really a tough decision. Say, so Russ, on, on the uh, um, land use map that we've got for out there, we are more, I think most of that stuff mm -hmm. is an R4 layout, if I'm Trying to remember the map, I don't yes, have it in front of me, but that yep. area. It's all there. yellow. It's all it's, yellow, yes. all of it. That'd be suburban, which is a uh, comprehensive plan. Uh, what does it show? Do you want me to answer, sir? Yes. yes. Uh, uh, it's uh, low density residential with the suggested zoning from RE to R4. Yeah. 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 So what I'm trying to do here too, when we look at this and we've talked about this before on that property, and we want to be able to transition. You know, we have the larger lots to the east side, and we want to basically have this be a transition. So at some point, if we did want to go to R6, I hadn't really, I hadn't really been envisioned any rushes the same way about having R6 right there. Yeah, maybe know. further west or down by where the um, the ditch is going to be dug somewhere in that area. It's just not here. This was this was kind of when we were looking at this you know, some of the original layouts. You know, this is R four is what we were looking at. Uh, but I, mean, I, I, yeah, I just want to see I, what you guys think. That I that do. Was, I do feel like it because we're setting a precedent that we for moving forward in the future, and then also just because of what was planned. For this area, it it doesn't make sense to me, unfortunately, to to go down to an R six. Yeah, but I suppose to play it proper here, Lucas, I should open up for a public hearing on the plat. Uh, it already was, and it's just been continued. Okay, and I got the for the other two or continuances as well, right? We did all three of them. Open up. July 19th. 
All right. So if anybody wants to make a comment about this, is it on the plat or the rezone or the future land use map? Go ahead. I've kind of talked about it here. Um, okay, Martin. Anybody? Go ahead, Martin, if you want. Uh, Martin Hohalter. I live east of Maple Lakes and south. A um, couple concerns that I think were valid that were brought up tonight, one of them being the traffic flow and cramming more lots in here. Um, I live right along 106th, and I know there's some effort and thought maybe behind maybe punching 106th <coughs> through, which I think could cause problems for me and my neighbors, but I can speak to that. But I have a feeling if we cram more lots in there, um, traffic could be an issue. Um, the other thing is, um, I don't know, I think the city's been pretty accommodating. You have a future land use map. If it says R4 and the developer came forth and said, R, you know, this is what I have and the infrastructure's in, mm -hmm. I don't know why we're trying to make this R6. That's kind of a head scratcher for me just because things don't maybe cash flow or whatever. I'm not sure. But those are my two cents. Thank you. Thank you. Because obviously we have some issues with our our ordinances now. So if it's um, how does it fall in? Do they decide if it was an old R four now it's going to be this in the future and that's what they have to adhere to? Or and I'm kind of curious about that. So when we adopt the new ordinance, we may have new lot size minimums, new dimensional standards. Uh, I'm guessing that we'll be doing city initiated uh, rezones throughout the whole city to make it conform with the new uh, zoning ordinance requirements, whatever those may follow. All right, anybody else any have any other questions or comments, anybody? I was just looking at planning and zoning. It says the votes were four to one, five to zero, and five to zero respectively, mm -hmm. based on a lot density proposal that was too high. Mm -hmm. I'm, I mean, from my, my opinion, I think we keep it at R4. I am, I'm not really inclined to go with R6 in this, on this one. So he's gonna have to convince me otherwise. Okay. <laughs> okay, no, I was, it, it seems, because we've talked about this a lot, and I know this, this piece of property has been in and out of here in discussion numerous times, mm -hmm. and We've talked about this. There's got to be a transition as we go. Yes. And mm -hmm. I, mean, we, I believe we need to keep this one as we originally thought as R4. Can, now, can go a little further ask? west and south, I can maybe be convinced a little bit on the R6 thing, but right now on this property, I can't see it. Remember that when they come to my neighborhood and his neighborhood and his neighborhood and her neighborhood, because I think transitions are a really big topic here. Yep. So. And we've talked about this right for the last three, four years. Everything's got to flow. There's got to be smooth transition from community to community or from area to area like that. I mean, but that's why we had that meeting with a consultant to try to figure out how we can make things flow and be what we want. Make sure we're getting right. Um, exactly. I mean, having having low or high density. I don't think. I mean. What we would love to see is the high density to be, you know, well planned out. Like having a having multifamily in a way where you have townhomes that look more individualistic or just really just well planned and mm -hmm. and more timeless, I guess, thought process to it. I mean, it's when they're all in a line and they're all the same. So I think what she's trying to say is that there are other developers that have uh, R6 as <coughs> um, their zoning, but they don't actually keep all the lots as R6. They change up the sizes and stuff like that, they change up the, the shapes of the homes and stuff like that so that there is some sort of a difference. It's not cookie cutter homes. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think that's what they were, I mean, these lots are bigger than the minimum R6, definitely. So I mean, I think it would have been, it's it's not, you know, the, the complete entry level thought process I see that but I think just the idea behind switching to R6 and what that means moving forward and I mean we're, we're working on we know we have issues we're working on changing it so, so 
Sarah? Struggling. I think we've got uh, some really good points here. And I, I see the developer's perspective. I see the landowner's perspective. Um, I see the overall perspective of our residents here. And ultimately, that's who I represent. And it's, it's, it's a difficult decision because when you have, uh, you know, business interests that you want to try to accommodate, but you represent people, you have to look at weighing who you represent. And right now, the people that I represent are sitting in this room and they're saying, we don't want this. Right. And, and planning and zoning is sitting in this room and saying, we don't want it. And I respect you, sir, for coming here and helping to give me a perspective. I know that we've had conversations and I, I, this isn't the first time that uh, I've looked at different plans that have changed and I think there's a time and a place, but in this particular case and in my particular situation, I too have to go with the, the people. Well, and there's continuity here. We've done this probably for the last four years where I've thrown the thing is the flow. It's yep. got to flow. Yep. And so what we're doing here would be consistent with that. I, I, would hope that I would hope that someone would do this for me. And so <coughs> I, uh, I believe that when I hear all the feedback and, you know, we, we, I asked the question specifically, how many people had a comment? And it was only two. But yet there's a whole bunch of people here and all those people are saying the same thing. I'm, I'm getting that majority. So mm -hmm. I'm feeling very strongly about transitions. I, it's something I felt very strongly about so, and very passionately about since the very beginning. But I have to be fair to everybody in the room. And in order to do that, I have to take the majority. And in this case, the people I represent are the majority. Okay. So uh, anybody else uh, public want any more comment on the plat or the rezone or the future land use amendment? Otherwise, I'm going to close the public hearing on all three. Okay. And I'll close the public hearing on all three of those. So, Lucas, you can do that. Um, any more discussion on the plat, rezone, or the amendment? Council members? Otherwise, I'm going to look for a motion. Do you guys want to go on this one? I would, vote. I, I would like to make a motion to deny. Okay. I will second. Makes a motion. Jeff does a second. And that will be to deny the plan. All right. So all in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. That was unanimous. So let's go to the rezone. <coughs> make the motion to deny the rezone. Okay. Sarah makes a motion to deny. Second. Chelsea does a second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. That was unanimous. And same thing on the future land use map amendment. I will make a motion to deny the future land use map amendment. Second. Motion. We just second. All right. All in favor, say aye. 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 All right. So there we go. All right, Barrett. That's where we're at with yeah. that one. Yeah. Please return to the uh, PowerPoint presentation. Move on to 16. Uh, that one with the graphic with the map. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. All right, so what you have before you is uh, two items, a future land use map change and a comprehensive plan amendment. Uh, so this was a request from the city in response, uh, or this is a city-led application in response to direction from uh, city policymakers to re-examine the future land use along uh, 64th Avenue South from County Road 17 East to uh, Drain 27. Uh, the reason why this direction was given is was kind of in response to the development uh, activity both in occurring inside and outside of uh, the city of Forest. Uh, so east of us in Fargo, uh, Fargo is building a 64th Avenue overpass over Interstate I-29. Uh, they're also building a large regional drainage pond uh, which is jokingly called Lake Fargo which is supposed to be a recreational amenity. Uh, also, Fargo has plans for intense and high density land uses along this corridor. Um, from the county side, uh, the county is planning a roundabout at County Road 17 and 64th Avenue. This is included in their 2023 uh, capital improvement plan. Uh, and the City of Forest has recently participated with other cities in our region uh, to do a, a corridor analysis on Veterans Avenue. And as part of that analysis, uh, they showed that there would be 
uh, future traffic counts of almost 20,000 cars a day um, under full build-out scenarios in 2045. So uh, for those that are not familiar with the future land use map, I'll kind of walk you through what that is. Uh, this document was adopted on June 15, 2019. It's a policy to guide different developments to areas that the, in areas that the community prefers. And this acts as a policy to kind of direct uh, staff and policy makers when we're uh, faced with development applications <coughs> to uh, help us evaluate those applications. So this in no effect whatsoever changes your zoning, takes away any uh, land rights you currently enjoy. This is just a future vision for a community. Uh, so in response to that request, staff put together a proposal. Uh, you could go back a slide and one more. Uh, so as you see along 64th Avenue on the north side, the orange area is uh, considered a compact development that's supposed to be uh, more high density residential uses, <coughs> like commercial. The yellow, that's characterized as suburban, that's supposed to be low density residential. And then that brown area is urban, so it, it proposes a uh, future land use of developments with uh, residential uses with urban form and also neighborhood commercial. Uh, as requested by our policymakers, we proposed a new a change to the future land use map. Uh, and with that future land use map, we propose to make, uh, oops, sorry, that is the wrong map up there. But, uh, uh, oops, sorry, go back to the previous map, please. Along the north of 64th Avenue, staff proposes uh, mixed use, future land use, uh, where the urban brown uh, designated future land use says we propose mixed use all the way out to uh, 66th Street, and then that pink area would be a transition piece, what we call intermediate. So that <coughs> intermediate, it doesn't exist in our future land use map or a comprehensive plan right now. That would be uh, with the intent to show that we want to see some sort of transition between high dense and intense land uses to uh, more uh, low density, less intense land uses. So it creates that transition. And then, of course, uh, in that southeast corner, uh, we kept it suburban where we would preserve the low density residential uh, development that exists today. So as part of this proposal, uh, we did do, we reached out to the neighborhood. We did a uh, neighborhood meeting on July 15th, 2021. Uh, some of those comments that we received from that meeting are included with the staff report. Um, and then on August 10th, uh, we had a planning commission meeting where comments were received from properties <coughs> and the map was modified again to incorporate the planning commission's recommendation. So I do apologize, the, the map on the bottom, the proposed, uh, what's incorrect about that map is that northeast corner, it's not intermediate, it's suburban, that should be mixed use all the way across. So uh, staff feels that the proposal complies with the 2045 Forest Comprehensive Plan and all the requirements of the zoning ordinance have been met. Uh, staff recommends approval as stated in the staff report and please let me know if you have any questions. Okay, Russell, you wanna comment on that at all? Just kind of get your perspective on it. Yeah, we I know you guys went through this as well, so. Thanks. Yeah, we, we had people come to the August 10th meeting who were not necessarily in favor of it on July 15th, but on August 10th, uh, <coughs> with one notable exception, everyone who came, and I'll talk about the exception, uh, was in favor of it. The person, the, 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 home, the, the landowner that was the most against it on July 15th could not be at the August 10th meeting and we have uh, <coughs> left their land off of it. Now, I'll point out These two little lots right here, uh, the one on the left, uh, is dead set against it. And that's why we've put a, a buffer, we've left a buffer in there. Now, 
person further to the east, uh, the furthest to the east, uh, would like mixed use there, but we're not going to jump. Mm -hmm. And since what we're looking at is a 2045 plan, not a 2025 plan, right. and eventually it may all go mixed use. They may change their mind, they may sell, or someone may make them an offer they can't refuse. Right. <clears throat> and that's all in the future. Now, the one uh, on the upper map, you see a, there's the big butterscotch area, then there's a little butterscotch lot right next to the yellow lots. Yep. Okay, that one, uh, the landowner there uh, objects to it and would like to go in with uh, compact development. The uh, one of the things I brought up the planning and zoning meeting is I don't want to see anything happening on 64th Avenue for several years. I don't want us doing that road until we can possibly uh, we have 5,000 people in town and we can possibly uh, do it with federal with some federal help yeah. <coughs> because of the enormous costs that are going to be involved. Yeah, and while the development going on east on 64th is eye-watering yep. and will be, that's why we want to look at this for the future land use map. But again, just to calm everyone's fears, I don't want to see us have to do anything with that street anytime soon just because of the costs involved. But the only thing I can think of there would be that the roundabout, but that's going to be the county's going to cover that. One. The roundabout? Hold on there. <laughs> um, I had a discussion with the county on that because of the last roundabout. And as I was described by the county, they proposed it as they would do it, but there was additions that made it more expensive from the city. So that last roundabout, the county, when they did it, proposed it at the $1 million, but the city added on to end up being five million, so that's why we have more of the special assessments on that. So when that bump bump going on 64th, you better believe your bananas that there's going to be a lot of residents talking about that because we aren't going to get a high cost on that like we did on the 76th one. The roundabout will be different up on 64th than it was on 76. It would be a bit smaller, but I don't think we need all the extra bells and whistles. There won't be any extra bills and whistles. You're not going to have a one and a half roundabout up there like you did here. Well, the five million wasn't just the roundabout. No, it was a lot of road. construction of the road, yep. so that was a big, a big portion of that. Right. So. so if I can yeah, but just not. But thanks, Russ. I just was mentioning that because I just. If I can add too, you know, the the reason why staff brought forward a proposal for mixed use uh, corridor was because we thought it would really complement the adjacent development in Fargo. Uh, the high traffic volumes, we thought that would be a great opportunity to capture some of that traffic. Uh, and then we also have a comprehensive plan, a recommendation of a future mixed use arterial down this corridor. And as a part of that recommendation, it also uh, recommends uses of multifamily and commercial. So we thought that mixed use would be a real appropriate future land use because it allows that flexibility to either develop a multifamily or a commercial development. So what we're aiming for here is this <coughs> consistent uh, mixed use corridor uh, down this corridor section from County Road 17 going into Fargo. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm going to open it up for public comment too, public hearing on this. So if anybody's got anything they want to add or say about it, feel free. Um, we'll still talk about it as well. Um, yeah, go ahead. Um, Good evening, Mayor, Council members. Uh, Chris Mack with uh, New Horizon Homes. Um, I support, um, we're um, with the development group that's doing the area south of 64th um, between the Suburban and uh, County 17. I totally support uh, what uh, what is- uh, Sally, will you what scroll down the map at the end? is showing here, but I do have another map 
the only thing that I, I seen on this one, and I know um, planning approved it uh, this way last week, but um, I would like to see the suburban on on our property that we are developing switch to the transitional. And I, I know the reason why we're doing the transitional is to buffer to the existing properties to the east. Um, and we would just move that transition zone further to the east. I don't know. Are you able to? I know it's in, in it was on the back, I think, of that PowerPoint. <coughs> So yeah, it would look like that. So where the the two lots that Russ was mentioning, um, right now that's shown as suburban. I'm proposing suburban going out, out of that <coughs> property um, and changing it to R6 and, um, and, and the intermediate use. So the purple? Yep. The purple would be immediate, and then we wouldn't have any of the uh, any of the suburban as shown. If you look at the proposal, it shows those two lots. There's a strip, yep. and, and that's um, suburban. Yeah, I apologize. I forgot to explain intermediate. Um, the what would be put in the comp plan? We would be recommending uh, zoning from R1 to R4, and then we have stated language in that staff report that states that it would be specifically used as a transition area between dense and less dense uses. And that was on the uh, previous slide. So you want to use that as a transition between dense and less dense, and you want it to be changed to R6? Nope. Um, <coughs> pull up the other map, and I can point. Just where it. it's yellow, where it's suburban, you yeah. want it to be intermediate. Yeah. I so thought we left those out specifically for a reason, because those were landowners that. If that were, strip is it. That is um, a yeah. No. The longer strip below those two the lots. Longer strip those below two smaller lots yeah. that Russ was referring to. Yep, yeah, at that strip. That's not. I was in all these meetings and I'm confused. About it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But yeah. Good point. Yeah, <laughs> this strip here um, is uh, part of. Okay. Yeah. yeah, what he is saying is true, and we discussed that. And since none of <coughs> that is platted, you know, it's it's not. It's not plat relevant, but I, I just we we fully believe that 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 that's where the inner the land use the land use will work out the way he wants it to. No, I want, well, to, I, I, I want to point out one other thing, though, on the proposed change down there. Is no, don't take it back where it was. Okay. <laughs> no, leave it there. This area was suburban up there, yeah. and we're changing it down here to compact. And the reason we're doing that is because if we're going to have mixed use, we don't necessarily want the suburban coming up right against, right, well, that's true, against the uh, suburban. That's why we're, we're going along, we're changing the rest of, of whatever that's going to be called up there, Southdale 7th, 5th, 6th, 7th, or 8th, whatever. Uh, we're also requested to change that. It wasn't commented on here. But that's how it shows on there. We're changing the rest of that area to uh, mm -hmm. compact development. So if transitional is R1 to R4 and you feel and there like there it's going to work out if either way, can we just make it a transitional a a color? I mean... There is a trend. Well, <coughs> yeah. It... We suggested that uh, staff was against uh, just having it follow perfectly straight lines all along the way. In other words, that mixed-use area up there on top, 
the mixed use area on south of 64 doesn't have a dimension to it. Can I jump in here for a minute? Go right ahead. Okay, so typically a uh, future land use map is meant to be a guideline. There's supposed to be blobs on the map of areas that we want to see in specific colors. And the colors designate the level of density of the housing, right? Typically, they don't follow property lines. Does that make sense? So this map, albeit <coughs> is something that was created a couple of years ago, we're getting stuck on some of the details and I don't want to get stuck on the details for either person because I believe you have a very valid point and I believe you have a very valid point. So what, what I think we need to look at is the fact that the 64th Avenue corridor is coming whether we like it or not. Anybody that's driven up there, if you haven't, I encourage you to. I've been up there several times. I moved road signs. Don't like, do what you did. There, right? Um, I walked my dog all along 64th because we have a couple landowners here that I appreciate attending. Um, it was very important to me to really have a good understanding of what was going on and why and what land uses you guys were looking at and what land uses you guys have and what changes we were making. So. Um, What's coming on 64th is something that we can't help, okay? Fargo's coming with some stuff and our hands are pretty much tied. Now, we want to play ball with them, we want to be nice, and we want to work together, but at the same token, we are Horace. And Horace means that we're not Fargo and we're not West Fargo, right? So we need to make some changes and start looking ahead to the future now so that we can make sure that we keep a thumb on the growth in that corridor so that it is what we want it to be instead of being forced, right? But at the same token, we want to play nice with everybody and we want to work well because these people are bringing very important things to our community. And we want you guys to do so in a manner where we can all work together and everybody can be fair. So that's why we're having these discussions. Now, I want to be frank. This is a, a map that goes up to 2045. This is a living document. It needs to change yearly based on the information we get from MetroCog and what we know, right? But at the same token, this can change this year, this can change next year, this can change in the next five years, and there's gonna be so many factors that are going to dictate that. But we need to be constantly evolving and growing with the changing times so that we're staying one step ahead instead of two steps behind and being more reactionary instead of proactive. So that's where the recommendation comes. And in this particular map, you can make it red, you can make it blue, hell, you can make it neon green for all I give a shit right now. I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. She's into it now, guys. I'm so sorry. <laughs> but um, what we need to understand is that we've got some landowners up there that have been there for a while, and we want to be respectful to these people. We want to make sure that they're able to get something on their land when this growth comes, and things have to change the way that, unfortunately, they aren't maybe prepared for. And they need to be aware of that so they can start making plans for that down the road. And so in order to do that, we're trying to bring this to light and have these discussions now so mm -hmm. that each and every one of them can make those plans and do what they need to do to be as successful as they can possibly be because they too can't help what's coming. No, it, and I totally support the intermediate. Um, so, I mean, I was just pointing out. Don't, don't, it was just a big don't worry about where, don't worry about where that line is. <coughs> yeah. I, the, I the, the, the I point the point me. the point is we want intermediate between those large lots <coughs> and what but, you're gonna do but we don't even have an intermediate category right now well, that's so coming is, up next right. so this creates a whole new deal right Russ let me ask you something too so up against where our borders at with Fargo have they got their 